As Ben Kentish was saying earlier, there is an argument, clearly, that we haven't spoken about the environment enough this election. But I still don't think this particular stunt's going to change that. Graham's in Sherborne. Morning, Graham. What do you think? Oh, hi. Good morning. And thanks for taking my uh, call as well. Um, I was uh, listening to Ben Kentish prior and uh, I wanted, I'm pleased that uh, I've got a slight opportunity to sort of continue that yeah. with, your, with yourself. Um, it was interesting to see how Ben was moving slightly towards the uh, uh, Just Stop Oil opinion. Um, the thing is that it is not paint. It is, um, I believe they said it was... Uh, corn flour. A custard, paint. custard dust. Powder. Yes. Yeah, custard powder. powder. Yeah. So, you know, don't talk about it being Well, I said that it's, I said that it's easily washed off. No, 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 no. But I did say it's easy to wash off. I did make that point. You did indeed, and that was uh, very good. <laughs> it, it, it does make it slightly a different... I mean, I don't agree with the people that uh, disrupted the, the traffic in London. Um, you know, I think there are other ways of doing it. You mentioned there must be other ways of doing it. And I really can't think of any other cleverer way uh, than doing it, because look at the publicity that that's... Uh, um, I tell you what, a dear friend of mine who's just coming back from... Mexico was saying there's poor monkeys in the tree. It, it's 100 degrees Fahrenheit over there, 95% humidity. There's been a, a, a heat dome over that particular county in Mexico for the past uh, two weeks, and people are dying. And if that happened over here, we wouldn't need... LBC to be publicising this in any way because we would definitely make sure that all the uh, politicians around the world and it will take all the politicians around the world to come together and agree that there has to be something that's done about climate change. I mean, I'm 75 years old and I've just seen the process that's gone on. It's hopeless. And there's nobody really that, especially I'm disappointed with uh, uh, Rishi Sunak and indeed uh, the Labour side not uh, uh, coming up with something cleverer because it will take statesmen throughout the world to get together and say, we've got a problem. I think it's about two million people of people have died in India through through um, uh, heat exhaustion. And it isn't just heat. What happens to the body when you get that hot is you have um, your your liver breaks down, your, you have diarrhoea, yeah, but you have... Graham, I, I get what you're saying, but how does chucking paint over Stonehenge draw we attention to any of the issues it. that you're we saying? We wouldn't be talking about it, dear boy. We're not we? talking about that really, are we? I mean, you're, you're very We're eloquent in that you... are climate change. But not really. I mean, they, it's not like they unfurled a banner saying that, you know, climate change, X, Y and Z. They, they, they don't just... have to with LBC around. Well, quite. But I'm talking about the sort of more wide publicity. There's, why was there not a spokesperson there explaining why they're doing it? Because if you've gone to Stonehenge that day, Graham, you go, oh, I would, why I are they just... I would have done that. I would have had... But no one well, told they should, me. They should have called you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but why... I, t I tell you what, mate. I tell you. There's a very simple answer to this. The... The uh, world leaders need to get together and there won't be any more um, trashing of uh, uh, wonderful monuments like that. Well, I mean, the, the thing I don't like and I'm interested in your reaction on this, Graham, the public aren't allowed near Stonehenge. No, and it and is rightly so. Well, you say rightly so. Well, then what, what on earth gives them permission to go up and start spraying it with orange cornflower substance? Like, because, but, it, because but, but, but the average it, Joe, it, like you and I, Graham, can't go and do that, can't, can't actually go up to Stonehenge. But apparently these folk can. They can do what they want, actually. Well, anyone can go up there, but it, it would be not legal to do so because it is a, a very, very beautiful site and it needs to be protected because people go up and touch it. And uh, it's been uh, uh, sectioned off for some while now. Um, and uh, not that I've been there myself for many, many years. But the point about it is there is 
has to be a way to make people more aware of the unbelievable things that are going on around the world. And our little island, you know, is in is in the peak of uh, of of, um, of pleasantness. Having, but there will there will, I'm sure, come a time uh, when there's flooding and there's heat, and it will affect us all. And We've run out of time. Steve is in Croydon. Morning, Steve. What do you think? Morning, morning, thanks, Mike. Michael. Well, first thing I'd like to say is um, I think the, the main thing they've been disrespectful to, uh, I've heard everyone like tonight saying about suffragettes, and you cannot compare um, these oil people to the suffragettes. They were fighting for equality. They were fighting for a completely different thing. Well, they were saying that know, this is as important, though, isn't it? The end no, of no. humanity. Listen, well, listen, it's not. I, I, I would throw stuff over stone ends and sit in the road. But these people, they, they haven't. They've got no answers. They just say, "Oh, let's just stop oil." But how did they get stone ends? I've been there. It's in the middle of nowhere. I suppose they drove there. You know? Yeah. Well, they quite often sort of have their "Just Stop Oil" T-shirts underneath their regular. Garments, I think. I know, but the point is, if they've driven there, <laughs> is, is they're pretty, um, you know, they, 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 they want to stop oil, but they've got no answers. All they want to do is disrupt everything and pretend they're some sort of uh, freedom fighter. They're not. The only, idiots. The, well, the only thing I would say, you say they're idiots, the only thing I would say, Steve, is I was very anti when they were blocking roads and stopping people going about their business. The only thing you have to say is, well, they weren't doing that this time. You can debate Stonehenge and whether it was right to do that and such an historic monument, but actually sort of they weren't impacting anyone that negatively compared to some of the other stunts. No, but the whole point is, what is their point? What answers have they got? You know, they, they can say, oh, to every government, just, just stop oil, do this, uh, block all the roads, throw paint. They've done it over paintings, they've done this. And if you say to them, well, what's your answer? They'd be better off all the energy and all the money they're spending on this is to invest in, in, in science, science, you know, and send it, donate it to science to get a, a, a better form of energy mm. rather than just keep critics. I mean, if you had no oil and no gas, the whole world would stop. And they Well, they're saying new they... new licenses, aren't they? But w- lastly, Steve, when you're talking with your mates about this or your family, w- what do they say? Do they tend to agree with you? Do they think that they're going too far, this group? I- I've got to be honest with you. Um, we don't really talk about the climate because I don't believe the science anyway. I know everyone's going to say, oh, he's wrong and all that. But Listen, in 1963, the country was virtually closed down by so much snow. You know, we was on about that and in food. But no one mentioned climate change in 1963. We had three months of snow, do you know what I mean? And everything was blocked. All the, all the ports were closed down. There was no one travelling anywhere. You know, it was a real problem. But now you have a little snow. bit of um, little bit of snow at the wrong what? time. Oh, it's climate change. Oh, it's, I don't believe the science what about the scientists why don't you believe the leading experts in it well because i think the world you know the world goes through through phases we had the ice age we had you know all all this and uh, there's you know cows give off more uh, methane and and all this than anything you know it's it's so complicated it's you, you can't just say just stop oil, just stop them producing oil, mm. just stop. We're going to, kill, you know, it's it's more than that. What you need is science to come up with a better form of energy. Morning, Jane. What do you think about this particular incident? Uh, good morning. Um, I am also going to bring up the suffragettes, but oh. I I don't have a problem with what the, the Just Stop Oil people did. I think if you go back to when the suffragettes started, it was a group of people who had a a belief in something that was important to them. Um, the Parliament at the time wasn't interested. The people weren't particularly interested. The men weren't particularly interested. And it took years and it took um, public nuisance. And yep. being in the papers and increasing the the knowledge, the, you know, the understanding of people around them. It took a very long time to get something that a lot of people didn't think was going to happen. And I think Just Stop Oil have to do the same. And they don't need banners. The, the, the whole name, the, the name Just Stop Oil is completely descriptive. 
So I guess they are not going to um, change the minds of many people, middle aged and upwards. But what they are going to do is keep the, the the topic relevant, and the younger people coming up will will always have it in mind that just stop oil is a is a good way to go. And you know, your previous caller was talking about snow. I think I wish there was more education that that climate change is not weather, and weather is not climate change. Um, and in the long term, young people have to have changes and governments have to have reminders and continued pressure before they'll do anything. But do you not? Th- I mean, I certainly think with Just Up Oil, they do the big um, sort of gestures like this, but it doesn't seem like they do an awful lot behind the scenes or certainly what I've seen to actually go and have meetings with these parties, to go and actually speak at Green Party Conference or at, go and have a meeting with Keir Starmer or no, the Shadow Environment keep, Secretary. Their job is to keep the topic in the public eye. Their job is just to keep, just stop oil, just to keep reminding people that, that oil is, is negative, that oil isn't good. The, you know, there's lots of other pressure groups doing that but the parliaments the government has to be annoyed they have to see people being irritated and they have to keep hearing just stop oil um and other pressure groups are in, are working inside with the government and with with everyone else but you know they, they're on the, these are the front line these are the the um the suffragettes out on the you know out on the streets mm. so, so when you see these jane Every yeah. time you see, it doesn't make you irritated. Clearly, you think it's part of the wider no, good, right? I think it's part of the wider good. I think I think that you know, big things have to come from small gestures. And the, as I say, the suffragettes would have been ignored for a very long time, for a much longer time than they were, if they hadn't kept themselves going and annoying people and annoying the parliament, and eventually, eventually getting their point across. So it's it's a slow. Process, but if you if if just stop oil stopped, and the, you know the whole concept wasn't in the news all the time, that gives Parliament the confidence to ignore it. Would you ever go out, Jane? Goals. Would you ever join Just Stop Oil? Um, I would. I would be happy to go and throw custard powder over some rocks. No, it wouldn't bother me at all. Uh, why haven't you so far? Out of interest. I'm a long way away from. <laughs> no, no, I know, but as in, I wasn't suggesting you get get, in, get on the A three hundred three to Stonehenge. Yeah. Right? I was meaning, would you do you take part in similar stuff in Scotland or? No. I don't. I don't. I don't. I, I don't think much of it happens up here. I think it's it's closer to the to Westminster. You know, it's closer to to London, where the those that make the decisions are, and mm. that makes sense. And you've got obviously a lot more people to disrupt down there than you do up here but I would I mean if, if there was to be a a call for people to go out and throw custard powder on things you I'd sign, up. When, just, sign up just lastly mm-hmm. Jane this particular one as we've discussed was mm-hmm. harmless when uh-huh. it is sort of blocking roads and stuff like that I mean you you brought in the suffragettes earlier on who yep. were obviously known for, for actually far more extreme tactics in some cases yep. Did, does that bother you or do you think that's fair game again it's public nuisance Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, and that's that, if that's the only way they're going to get noticed, you know, they're not getting noticed by asking nicely. You don't get noticed by Westminster by sending in pleasant little letters saying please stop oil. You don't, they, they just they just don't acknowledge that because there's too much money involved. So the only way to actually get acknowledged is to annoy them. Edwards in Brighton. Morning, Edward. Do you agree with this? Um, no, these these stop oil people. They, I think they're quite naive, actually because uh, oil is an integral part of our lives. Um, they're just wasting their time. And uh, w- one, one aspect of uh, pollution that people don't talk about is the merchant navy. There's thousands and thousands of ships cruising the world with huge diesel engines that are pouring out garbage. Uh, you've got world navies with big battleships. And then these uh, huge uh, air, air, aircraft carriers, they're all polluting. And uh, th- these, these people are so naive and stupid, they just uh, need to wake up and smell the coffee. And uh, th- these ships are, are completely unregulated. Governments can't touch them because they're cruising in international waters most of the time. 
And uh, all the rubbish they collect through through human consumption on board, they don't go into port and wait for a, a, a council dust cart to turn up and take it away. They toss it overboard. They pollute. So much pollution is going on with the merchant navy. No one's doing anything wow. about it. And on this particular stunt, though, Edwards, do you think it changes anyone's mind? Well, you know, people can be swayed, but uh, oil is, is is important to life, to be quite frank with you. You know, these ships are a necessary form of transport. You can't do away with them. Mm. And if they think they can, well, well they're, they're, I think they're, they're living in South Cuckoo Land. Well, they're talking about new oil and gas licences, aren't they? They're not saying to completely stop using existing ones, to be fair to them. Well, stop oil sounds to me like stop oil. I think well, that's what it says, doesn't it? Yeah, well, I think they're using a three-word slogan to try and get their message across. But you, you don't think this persuades anyone, Edwards? Well, it, it will persuade people, obviously. People people have sympathy for them, and but, but you, you, you've you got to get your eye on the ball. Well, you what know, would you've got you, to see well, what's going on. Well, what would you suggest they do instead? Go Just away out of interest. and stop making a nuisance of themselves. <laughs>